Okay, so when you breathe in and out, you're basically breathe, breathing in and out air. Like, I know, duh, right? But there's a volume of air that you can breathe in and a volume of air you can breathe out. So we have to think, well, you kind of want to think about like this whole idea that the purpose of the respiratory system is to bring in oxygen and take out carbon dioxide, right? So when you want to test lung function, what they do is they put you on a spirometer and then they test how much volume of air is moved basically in breathing, in different types of breathing. And this creates a spirograph. So this is what a spirograph essentially would look like if you were put on a spirometer. You're gonna be asked to just do some very simplistic breathing. So in the first part, what you're gonna see is they're gonna ask you to do inhalation. So this is the volume of air that you inhale. Normally, just a normal inhale, okay? And then what we're gonna see is that we have a volume of air that we exhale. So that's exhale. And that's our passive exhalation. This total volume of inhale and exhale right here, this is called tidal volume. It's about 500 milliliters. So you're inhaling and exhaling about 500 milliliters. So basically every peak you wanna think is one breath. So inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, okay? So again, then you start your inhale, you start your exhale, just like that. If, you, if you're asked to forcefully exhale, let's make this another color. So here you see that we have the exhale. Uh, right, this is the exhale of our patient right here. So at the end of that exhale, that normal exhale, what you can do is you can ask your patient here to forcefully exhale, right, like that. So basically, exhale as much air as you possibly can, like that. So not exactly like that, but okay. This is called expiratory reserve volume. So this is ERV. So the amount of air that you can forcefully exhale. So we'll talk about how you forcefully exhale. Like you have to use additional muscles basically to do that forced exhale, uh, which I guess I could do right, right now. So you can have forceful breathing, right? So remember in normal quiet breathing, your diaphragm contracts and all of your other muscles relax, like your abdominal muscles relax. You also contract your external intracostals, and you can see how as we contract your diaphragm and push that downwards, our abdomen bulges out. During a normal quiet inhalation, right, the abdomen relaxes, I'm sorry, the diaphragm relaxes, and then you actually are going to, uh, you don't really contract your muscles, but because the abdomen recoils, it's pushing all of the organs internally, pushing the diaphragm back upwards, and you exhale out. So this is a more passive process. Okay. If we're going to do a forced inhalation, we'll look at that in a minute. If we do a forced exhalation, what you're going to see is that you can use some additional muscles to do this, right? Ah, oh, these muscles that they have outlined right here in this diagram, the abdominal muscles. So things like the lateral hypaxial muscles and rectus abdominis essentially contract the, the abdomen. So you want to think about your obliques, rectus abdominis. I'm just going to abbreviate. You guys should not use abbreviations, okay? These muscles you can see is they're going to push on the abdomen. So remember how we talked about these in the previous class in 2230 about how it compresses the abdomen. And as you compress the abdomen, you push the diaphragm up and you exhale a little bit more forcefully, okay? You can also do chest-based forceful exhalation. So this is with belly. With the chest, what you're going to use is you're going to use internal intercostals. And you're going to use transversus thoracis. 
to forcefully exhale <sighs> like that. Okay. That is you're using a little bit of your belly too, but there's like a slight difference in just con contracting these muscles in your chest here and it pushes on your sternum to forcefully move everything out versus actually contracting your abdomen. And it's also going to help you with, it, with this little bit of push of ex extra air out. So that would be our expiratory reserve volume, that little bit of air that you push out. Since you can't push everything out, essentially, any air that remains or lingers in the respiratory system, like in your nasal cavity, in your trachea, in your lungs, keeping everything open is called residual volume. Whoa, sorry. Residual volume is RV, okay. You can't really measure RV. You can only assume what RV is, basically. When you look at your spirit graph, once you figure out what your expiratory reserve volume is, your residual volume is all the air that goes basically down to a volume of zero. So this is zero volume and this is time down here. So over time, we're doing this, right? So in this case, we can see residual volume for this individual is about 1,200 milliliters. Expiratory reserve volume is low, about 1,000 uh, about a thousand milliliters. This will vary from individual to individual based on gender, height, sex, health, a whole bunch of different things, okay? Then let's say you tell your patient to breathe normally again, right? They're gonna inhale, they're gonna exhale, they're gonna inhale again. So they're gonna inhale right here. And when they inhale, you tell them, now I want you to take the biggest, deepest breath you can in. And when you do that, you're going to see that your graph starts to peak up, right? So that's another volume of air right there. This volume of air is called the inspiratory reserve volume or the IRV. Sorry, I was just checking something really quick. So that's the amount of air that you can forcefully inhale. So let's just go back to our picture here and think about how do we force inhale. Okay, so we see how we have force exhale. For force inhale, again, you can do chest or you can do belly. When you do chest forceful inhale, essentially you need to make your thoracic cavity bigger. So in this case, you use sternocleidomastoid. and the scalenes. And basically they help pull up the first rib. So <gasps> like that, you can feel how it's gonna pull up rib one and rib two. And as you pull up rib one and rib two, every subsequent rib increases. Okay, you can also still use the external intercostals and the diaphragm, you just contract them harder in order to do <gasps> a deep chest inhale, okay? So yes, you still use the diaphragm and use these external intercostal muscles. In terms of your belly breathing, you relax all these abdominal muscles. Essentially, you're gonna contract your diaphragm a bit harder, okay? And as you contract your diaphragm harder, it gets pulled down more, pushed down more. It depends on which, which, which phrase you wanna use, but you, you're gonna actually flatten it much more. So as you flatten it much more, the, the organs get pushed farther out and your belly goes outwards more, okay? But that's inspiratory reserve volume. So there are four volumes you can measure, tidal volume, expiratory reserve volume, residual volume, and inspiratory reserve volume. The other ones are capacities, and capacities are calculated volumes. Basically, you have, to, you have to use these four volumes in order to calculate four additional things, okay? Those four additional things include one, total lung capacity. Total lung ca capacity tells you what is the total volume of air that can be in your lungs. 
So since this is total lung capacity, you total all those things up. It's basically tidal volume plus inspiratory reserve volume. Whoops. Plus expiratory reserve volume plus residual volume. This is a bit, all the volumes together. Okay. The other one you can have is called vital capacity. So in vital capacity, vital capacity tells you the amount of air that you can uh, breathe in normally. So it's tidal volume plus your deep inhale and your deep, deep exhale. Vital capacity is very important. It's actually very important for understanding lung capacities and, and uh, whether or not your lungs are healthy or not. Vital capacity is what we're going to use in lab to figure out if we have healthy lungs. This is what a, a respiratory therapist and a doctor would actually use also. Okay, so let me maybe do a highlighter here for total lung capacity. So total lung capacity is that whole thing. That's total lung capacity. It's all the volumes, okay? Vital capacity, Let's try to use a different color. Vital capacity is basically expiratory reserve volume, tidal volume, plus inspiratory volume. So that's vital capacity right there. Okay, this is total lung capacity. Then you have things like inspiratory capacity. Its name says everything. This is IC, I'm sorry, this is VC. This is TLC. Inspiratory capacity basically is gonna take your normal inhalation plus inspiratory volume. So you're gonna see, you're gonna go like that right there. And this is inspiratory capacity. It's basically the total amount of air that you can inhale. So this is IRV plus tidal volume. And then the fourth one is called functional residual volume. Or FRV, okay. And this is basically your, your expiratory volume plus your residual volume. So this is ERV plus residual volume. It's basically gonna tell you the, the total amount of air that you could exhale plus that would linger. Uh, functional, oh, it's not functional residual volume, I'm sorry. This is called functional, it has to be a capacity, duh. Functional reserve capacity. FRC, like that. So essentially it's from here where we have our um, forced exhale all the way to our residual volume. Just like that. Uh, I was gonna put highlight this one, but eh, that might end up being bad. But eh, it's fine. It is. It is what it is. Okay. So those are our volumes and our capacities. Just normal. If you were normal, this is what your spirograph would look like. You'd have a a really good amount of uh, deep inhalation. You're looking at you know like more than 2000 milliliters in terms of volume right there. You should be able to inhale much more than you exhale, right? Because your inhalation fills your lungs and makes them get bigger. Whereas your exhalation, you can't exhale all the air out because residual volume is going to be required for your lungs to continue to be uh, open all the time. Or like, not. I don't wanna say inflated, but have a volume of air within them. 
So that got us through like forced inhale, forced exhale, and like some of the muscles that are working also. Just, just review the PowerPoint as well, okay?